check. Twenty. All right. Yeah, space. Hmm. Yeah, space. I should have space. Good. Good reminder. And we Three got. We got space. We got three gigs. That should be more than enough. Cool. Very good. Now we. You didn't miss anything. I didn't. No. Just started recording. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you missed uh, my prediction of the future, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> that won't be on the test. All right. Although it can make you, you know, millions or billions of dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, what we'll do today is to continue with the example that I used on last Thursday. Remember last Thursday, we had one sample program that makes use of by valve parameters. But I did not make it recurse, okay, so it was only one single invocation. So what we'll do today is to continue with that and make it, you know, recursive. Actually make it so that it has to call itself. And I'll just look for the file. It was the 10th by valve. And also, by the way, you have a new homework assignment on uh, local variables and by valve parameters. <coughs> okay, but let's let's talk about this one first. This is the algorithm that we were working on last Thursday. And the new concept that was introduced last Thursday was the concept of a by value parameter, like n in this case. And I explained that a by value parameter behaves, for the most part, kind of like a local variable. In other words, it is created every time you invoke the subroutine that, you, that has that parameter. Um, you have to deallocate it at the end of the invocation. Um, it can store a value. The main difference between a by value parameter and a local variable is that a local variable always starts with an unknown value. When it starts to exist, you have to put a question mark in the column because you don't know what value it has at a time. In, you know, and then with, on the other hand, with by value parameters, the value, the initial value, is specified by the invoke statement. In other words, whoever is triggering this invocation gets to specify the initial value of n in this case. Yep. So n is an input given by a user? Yes, it is a way, it, it can act as the input into a subroutine. So like in, in a real life program, it would have print input a number between whatever they would do that and that would be the end. That's what we're saying. Mm, or, or something like that. Not quite, because you know when you say print n and then ask for the input, that's a user interaction. Right, right. This one does not require user interaction. This is just inside your program one part of your program can specify the quote-unquote input to another part of the same program. So is n a global variable? That'll no, n is not a global variable. That's the whole point is we don't want to use any global variables. In this case, n is a by-value parameter. It's called a by-value parameter. And we traced it in sheet 2, you know, but in this right. case it does not call itself because the, the value of the parameter is small, is low enough that it does not have to call itself. So what we'll do is in sheet three, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll go ahead and change the program and save it again. So in this case, let's specify a two here and save the program again. But this time we'll save it into today's folder. So this will be different from the one on the other day. And then we'll go ahead and trace it again. stuff that you saved for when you were doing the practice exams? Uh, I haven't it? probably forgot to upload it. Yeah, because I couldn't find the stuff. So I have to upload it after the class. Okay. Yep. Did you? No. no? Okay. Yep. Where will N be listed on the test? Say again? Where will N, the value of N, be listed or will it just as the program goes on? This okay. is like I, that's it. That's well, what you're saying. Well, that's the whole thing. N cannot be pre ca it cannot be predetermined because right. N only starts to exist when the subroutine is invoked. 
So before you get to the statement of the invoke, the, the invoke statement, n doesn't even exist. Right. There's no column associated with n. So the value of n depends on the invoke statement. Okay, let, let's go ahead and okay. trace this one and see if you have any questions. Okay, so once again, line 10 is the only line that is outside of the definition of a subroutine. And because we're invoking a subroutine, certain things you know we have to do anyway. Oh, yes. Such as allocating a column for the return line number. In this case, the next line is post. And because it also has a by value parameter, we also have to allocate at this time a column for n. Oops, wrong window. Okay. Now, <coughs> the important part is the initial value of n is no longer unknown. That would be the case for a local variable. n as a by value parameter would have its in initial value specified by the invoke statement. In this case, the invoke statement is on line 10. And the notation here is basically saying you know, the value of 2 should become the initial value of the parameter n. So that's why column E starts with the value of 2. After we set up everything, we can now continue execution in the subroutine, starting on line 3. Line 2 is not traceable, because all it does is to say that n is a by-value parameter. On line 3, we evaluate the condition n is greater than 1 is true, because n has a value of 2. So this time, we have to go to line 4. Line 4 is an invocation of the same subroutine, but that should not, we should not be bothered by that. So we have to do the same thing. We have to allocate one column for return line number. The invoke is on line four, so when it comes back, we should continue on to line five. Any questions about this step here? No, okay. And because we, because we are invoking factorial, we also have to remember to specify the initial value of n. Now this is where things can be a little bit confusing because if you look at line four, n appears on the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side of the right arrow in this case. So what is it really saying? Well, let's not worry about, okay, let me just explain what this notation means. The n on the right-hand side is saying we are now setting up this parameter. That's all it's saying. We are setting up the parameter n when we invoke factorial. The left-hand side, on the other hand, specifies the value that should become the initial value of that parameter. Okay, so the end on the left hand side, which column do you think it is referring to? It's referring to a column that is already existing that has a value, so that will be column E, which means 2. In other words, this end here has a value of 2 because it is column E. Minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. We use that value, 1, to specify the initial value of the parameter n, which is the one that we are setting up here, column g. Are there any questions about this step? Because this is one step that can be confusing. All the other steps are fairly straightforward. It's fairly mechanical. This is the only one that can be confusing. So since, since n is not defined in this invocation, this is the definition of of that and in that invocation on um, line four. Mm, n is a parameter, so when you allocate space for it, you also have to specify its initial value, and it is specified by the invoke statement. And that's why these are all effects of line four, because line four is the invoke statement, and the invoke statement is responsible for everything that happens on column G and column F. Are we doing okay so far? Okay. Then we can move on. Now that we have set up column F and column G, we continue execution from the beginning of the subroutine, which is factorial. <coughs> so we go back to line 3. It evaluates n is greater than 1. And which n am I evaluating this time? The rightmost one. Oh. The rightmost one, which is column G. Column G has a value of 1. 1 is greater than 1. It's false. We have to go to the else part, which is on line 7. After line 7, we get out of the conditional statement. We get to line 9. Line 9 is the end of the subroutine. There are two things to do. One is to look up the rightmost um, return line number column. It tells us we have to continue on to line 5. 
once we make use of the return line number, we can deallocate everything that we allocated for this invocation. So return line number and n are both deallocated at this time. allocate this one too. Are there any questions? Yep. This isn't on the test. This will be on the homework after the test, right? Or is Correct. It this is test? not on the test. The test will not have subroutines. So I should just wait to do the homework after the test? Correct. Yeah. Okay. The, well, the homework is due next Tuesday. The test is tomorrow. The test will be Thursday. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, I will be absent next Tuesday. So there won't be any class next Tuesday. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to talk to your Wednesday professors you know, to really make use of that. <laughs> okay. Now that we are back onto line five, what are we going to do? Yep. On, on row nine, uh -huh. we're supposed to assign the value to R. Oh, that's right. I forgot. So R is a global variable. It's supposed to get a value of 1. Thank you. Very good. Now we're back to line 5. Line 5 says we want to evaluate the product of R and N, and then assign it or use that value to update R again. R is easy. It's a global variable. It has a value of 1. And on the other hand, which N are we talking about? The rightmost definition of N is column column E, because column G is gone at this point. So column E is the one that we're looking at. It has a value of 2. So 1 times 2 has a value of 2. And then we update R with that value. Then we get out of the conditional statement. We get to line 9. And we do the same thing. We have to look up where we're supposed to continue with the return line number. We're supposed to continue with post. Now that we make use of these, we can now deallocate those two columns. And then we continue on post, which means we're all done. So are there any questions about this particular algorithm? We're still computing the factorial of n, except in this case, we are no longer using a local variable. We are now using a by value parameter. Any questions? No questions? All right. So let me save this one. And then I'll, do, I'll show you an example of why by value parameters are useful, but they cannot do everything that we want to do. Okay? I mean, you know, to introduce a new concept, we have to understand why is that concept important. So in this case, you know, you know we want to talk about passing by reference. Why is a by ref parameter important? The best way to do it is to illustrate the limitations of a by-value parameter. Yep, go ahead. I was going to say whatever the parameter here would find the uh, factorial of that number mm -hmm. in the invoke statement. With that, yes, you know, n is the. It will put n factorial into the global variable r. That's the. Uh, right. Function of the subroutine, and then like in a program, you would have that could be a user input or whatever. You can you can use a user input to specify parameter n, yes. Okay, yeah. But you can also have other ways to specify that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at this new program. We'll define this subroutine and we'll call it swap because it, its only job is to exchange the values of two things. And since we have just introduced by value parameters, we'll make use of that. By val x, by val y, and I also need a local variable t. The sequence of operations to swap the values of two things, we know that already. Okay? Because you know, one of the sample questions from last semester's uh, exam two has a swap. So in this case, you know, we kind of know that okay, t has to store the value of x before we update x with the value of y. And then y gets the old value of x back, which is stored in t, and that's it. Okay. So we say and find sub. And now what we need to do, well, first thing first, you know, just go ahead and change the indentation. Now let's have you know, two global variables. I'll just use i as the first global variable. It starts with the value of 5, doesn't matter what it is. 
and k is the next one. I wanted to use j, but j and i are really hard to differentiate. So k is better in this case. And k has a value of, say, 11. Okay, doesn't matter what they are. And we'll go ahead and invoke the subroutine called swap. We'll use i to specify the value of x. We'll use k to specify the value of y. And then we'll see what happens. Because what I want to do is to exchange the values of i and k. And the subroutine swap will seems to be able to do that, but it does not, obviously, because otherwise I would not say that this illustrates the limit limitation of by value parameters. Let's go ahead and trace this algorithm after I save it to today's folder limitations of by val. Go. And we'll use sheet 2 to actually trace it. Go. We don't really need comments in this case because we don't have any um, conditional statements. I'll start with line number. We have two global variables. Which two are global variables in I this case? And I and K. Very good. I and K are the only two global variables because X is a bival parameter, Y is a bival parameter, T is a local, and outside of the context of the subroutine, I and K are the only names that do not have any explicit declarations. For the precondition, we can say we don't know anything about these two because we are going to initialize these two anyway in the program. On line one, i gets a value of five. On line two, whoops, uh, line, that'll be line nine, sorry. And on line 10, k gets a value of 11. And on line 11, we invoke the subroutine. This time, we just have to mechanically do the same thing every time we have to invoke, we, we invoke a, a subroutine. We need a return line number. Line 11 is the last line already, so the next line will be post. So that one should be no big deal. And then we have two by value parameters and one local variables to specify. Each one needs its own <coughs> column allocated at this point. So we have x as a by value parameter, we have y as a by value parameter, and we have t as a local variable. T is the easy one to deal with because all local variables start with some unknown value, so we'll just use a question mark to represent that. X and Y are by value parameters, which means their initial values are specified by who? Line 11. By I line 11, K. the invoke statement. Very good. Now, in this case, I really should be interpreted as an expression. Because this could have been i plus k minus 2, the whole thing divided by 10, take the floor function of that, and then raise it to the power of 5. It's just an expression. It provides a certain value. So i is just an expression providing a value. i as a global variable has a value of 5, and that's what it specifies is x should start with a value of 5, and likewise y should start with a value of 11. Any questions at this point about you know, how Co the columns are set up. No questions? Okay. Now we get into the subroutine because once we set up the columns, we continue execution inside the subroutine starting on line 5 in this case. Line 5, I mean, these three statements are pretty easy. 5, <coughs> 5, 6, and 7. You're in the wrong column. Hmm? Yeah, you're in the wrong column. Oh. Okay, so we now continue on line 5, even though i does have a value of 5t. <laughs> okay, on line 5, we copy the value of x to t. x has a value of 5, so now t will end up with the same value. On line 6, we copy the value of y to x. y has a value of 11, so now x also has a value of 11. Now we're moving on to line 7. Line 7 is going to copy the value of t, which is 5, and it will overwrite the value of y with 5 like that. And then we get to line 8, which is the end of the subroutine. At the end of a subroutine, we have to look up the return line number to tell us where to continue execution, which is post. And then we have to deallocate all of these. And I'm just getting sick and tired of having to do that all the time, so I'm going to 
see if I can. It doesn't have a record. Try run micro. Maybe mm -hmm. it'll give you the option then. Run micro. Macro. Macro. Uh, it doesn't have the option to record. I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Did you have a crossed out thing and copy and paste it off another document? Well, not for all the like columns. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. Can you copy or can you paste formats? Let's see what I can do with cell. Paper. There we go. But it doesn't have a oh, font effect. I can do it to the entire cell. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the trace of this program. Sorry about the distraction of you know using LibreOffice. Okay, but what is the bottom line of this program? Did anything happen to I and K because of the subroutine? No. No, the subroutine worked on copies of I and K, but never touched the original. That is the limitation of by value parameters. Because when you pass something by value, you're not giving the subroutine the original item. You're making a photocopy of the original. And then the subroutine can only work with the photocopy, the clone, you know, a duplicate of the original. And that's why you know, the swap logic is 100% correct. Because you can see that the values of x and y, they got exchanged. It's just that they were never linked back to the variables i and k. Is everybody understanding the one, the purpose of this sample program, and two, what it is illustrating? Yes, no, yeah. sort of, yep. It's illustrating that you're not recording back to the um, global variable for other programs to use, other subroutines to use, right? Well, so, yes. What it is illustrating is this statement here, when you invoke the subroutine, when you use uh, the value of i to specify the initial value of x, that's exactly what it does. It makes a copy of the value of i and make a new column so that it has that value. Yep. Um, no, the homework is. Um, the homework also has no global variables, but it has a one by value and one local. That's it. That's nothing. I'm just looking at the appearing and disappearing of the columns and what happens, you know, okay. that, uh, with that. Yep. That's all. There's there's no side effect whatsoever. Yeah. So a by val is just a value that you gave us, right? That is given that we know. No. The, the the value of x is specified by this portion. Okay. In this case, it is i. In this case, it is is k to specify the initial value of y. But once you set up the columns, x and y are their own columns. So they behave exactly like a variable. You can change the values you know, during the execution of the summary. Okay. Yep. Um, is it possible, it's possible for a subroutine to assign um, global variables, I, yes. I and K? Yes. But if you change the, OK, let's say you change the global, if you change the swap to ref to refer to i and k with these three statements, then the subroutine can only work with global variables i and k. You can no longer use a generalized subroutine to swap the values of any two variables. And that's why we don't want to do it, because we don't want to use global variables at all. Okay. Mm. But you could, um, at the end of this, then you could say, like in the next line, uh, before it I gets x and y gets k, that but that is still a, an explicit tie of the global variables to the result of the subroutine. So you're still you still end up with the same problem. The subroutine only works with i and k. It won't work with any other variables. Okay. okay. So basically, the limitation is by value gives you a way to in to provide input to a subroutine but there's no way to get extract any results out of a subroutine. So it's a great way to protect something. If you don't want anyone to mess with i and k, passing by values guarantees that no one else 
can mess with the values of i and k. But on the other hand, for a subroutine like this, it is expected to change the actual value of i and k and not just x and y. Is that okay so far with this sample program? Yes? Okay. Now let's go take a look at the fix. The fix of this is really easy, at least from the program perspective. All I have to do is to change this to by reference, change this to by reference, and then I also have to change the arrows to a by directional arrow. The by directional arrow should imply what it does. Okay. So when we go ahead. By reference parameter is the full name or no? By reference parameter is the full name. But I just use by ref, you know, because right. it's, it's shorter to type. Okay. This is the fix. Syntactically, it's a very simple change. Okay, I change the by val to by ref. I change the arrows to match the meaning of by ref. But the double-sided arrow seems to imply i and x are pretty much the same thing. k and y are pretty much the same thing. Yet, I don't have to refer to global variables in the subroutine. So this seems to do everything that I want to do. I want to avoid the use of global variables, at least in subroutines. And this one does not have any global reference inside the subroutine. And yet, I claim that this will be able to do what I wanted to do in the first place. I want to exchange the values of not x and y, but i and k in the end. So let's go ahead and trace this algorithm and find out you know, how it gets this done. <coughs> okay. And I'll just go ahead and start from scratch. We're going to save that. Hmm? We're save that. Good. I will save it as by rev saves the day. Pass phrase. All right. So the first, the first few things are exactly the same. Line 9 initializes i to 5. Line 10 initializes k to 11. Line 11 is going to observe some changes already. And this is one of the most important changes brought about by the use of by, by ref parameters. The first part is the same. The return line number is still post because line 11 is the last line already. Um, the third part is, the fourth part I should say, is still the same because we still have a local variable t and as a local variable it always starts with an unknown value. So these two do not change. Column E and column F on the other hand is going to change. In fact, it will be changed quite a bit. I still have x occupying one column. I still have y occupying a column. In other words, the fact that you have to allocate one column Per parameter does not change when you change the type of parameter from by val to by ref. So they still behave the same way regarding when do you allocate the columns. However, when you specify the content of the column, you're no longer specifying you know, 5 or 11 as actual values. Now you specify that x is also known as column B. And then you say y is also known as column C. In other words, x becomes an alias of column B, and y becomes an alias of column C. Are we doing OK so far with this? Every time you want to do something with column E, which is parameter x, it will tell you, hey, don't do it on this column. Do it to column B. It, it works that way when you refer to it. It works that way when you want to change it. So let's go ahead and continue with this because you know, this seems like it's mostly just a synthetical change, but when you actually trace the algorithm, you will see that it is now behaving differently. Line five says the right-hand side refers to x. So I look up x, which is column E, but x does not give me a particular value. All it does is to redirect me to another column. X says, well, I don't have a value, but go ahead and look at column B. Column B has the value that you want. Column B has a value of 5, so that means the right-hand side of line 5 evaluates to 5. I will store that to T. T is now updated to a value of 5. All right, is that okay so far? It is important 
not to say that T is also known as column B, because you cannot cop you cannot copy an alias. You can only copy the value of an alias. Are we doing okay so far? Line six is the most troubling one, or at least up to this point. The right hand side is okay. The right hand side refers to y, and we can just use exactly the same mechanism as last time. Y is, is column F, column F is also known as column C. In other words, it tells us to go to column C to get the value. Column C has a value of 11 at this point. So that means the right hand side of line six is simply 11. Okay, that's the easy part. Where am I supposed to store that? I'm supposed to store that to x. x is column E. Do not change the value on column E, because column E says that x is just an alias of another column. So when you make changes to a by ref parameter, you don't change the parameter itself, you change what the parameter is referring to, and hence the name passing by reference. In this case, x is referring to column B. Column B is the one that gets changed to 11. That is the twist. Yep? Is there, okay. is there ever a way to do it in the columns and then just print back and change the others at the end, or, or is that? OK, you're asking a question that is best answered in an upper division class at a four-year university. <laughs> there is such a mechanism, but it is not called by, ref uh, it's not by value, it's not by reference, it's called by name. Okay? But we're not going to touch that, because no modern language actually implements that anymore. Okay, now that you brought up out of curiosity what old language did. The older languages, you know, it's called it's called um, passing by name. You know, you can look up, you know, a PL or programming language, you know, textbook. You know, they will explain that, but you know, it's it's no longer relevant because no um, current programming language, you know, actually implements passing by name. So don't worry about that part. Ada does that too, you know, but you know, we don't want to deal with that. Okay, but is that okay? Is row eight or why row eight? is updating column B. Is that okay? Is that concept okay? Okay. In other words, every time you see passing by reference, you are opening up a wormhole. Okay? There's a wormhole going from here to column B. There's a wormhole from here to column C. Whenever you want to dump, dump something into column E, it goes through the wormhole and it goes to column B. When you want to dump something into column F, once again, it goes through the wormhole and appears in column C. Is that okay? Should I explain you know, wormholes and how it distorts you know, time space fi with the fabric? No, go ahead. So basically, column F is the one that Every time you refer to column F or parameter Y, you are referring to column C. It's an alias. And then the name of something else. All right. Well, you know, once we can track down you know, what line 6 is doing, line 7 is easy. Line 7 has T on the right-hand side. T is a local variable. It has a value of 5. And we want to use 5 to update Y. Y is column F, but remember what F is. Column F is a wormhole to column C. So when you want to change column F to 5, you should be changing column C to 5. And that's what's happening here. And then on line 8, same thing. You know, We are now at the end of the subroutine. We look up return line number. It tells us to continue execution at post. And so now we have no use of any of these columns. Just copy and paste, and we can format the entire cell and use strikeout like that. Oh, there you go. That's the end of the trace. If I want to use an analogy with a library, I can actually do that. 
passing by value, okay, let's say I am the subroutine and you are the invoke statement, okay? And my job is to read a book and highlight a particular word that you specify. Okay, so I'm going to have a, a user highlighter. You give me a book, and my job is to go through the entire book, look for all occurrences of that particular word, and highlight every single one of them. Passing by value means that you go to the library, you check out a book, and then you make a photocopy of the book. Okay, that's passing by value. You make a photocopy of the book, and then you give me the photocopy. So I'll do my job, you know, go through all the pages, look for the word that you want me to find, and highlight everything. But what happens when I'm all done with highlighting the book? You burn it. <laughs> I'm a little more environmental. I will shred it and put it into the recycle bin. <laughs> Which is what happens with, you know, passing by you know, with, with these columns. They don't disappear. They don't get incinerated. They just get deallocated. It's resources recycled. Okay. But you don't get it back. The whole point is you don't get the book that is highlighted back because it is a copy to me, and I will just shred it. I deallocate it, and you cannot have it back. That's passing by value. And that's why passing by value has limitations. Whenever you want to pass a result back to the invoke statement or whoever is executing the invoke statement, you cannot use by value. You have to use by reference. Now, what does it mean when you try to get me to do the same thing, but this time I use by reference as the parameter? Well, what are you actually giving me? The original, the original nope. Uh, nope. You are giving me a call number. Okay? The AKA you know, thing is nothing more than a little slip of paper with a call number on it. QA blah 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 QA76 is usually the computer section dot something dot something so me I have to go to so I am exactly so I the subroutine is now responsible to actually go to the library find the book and highlight it and be yelled at by the librarian <laughs> right okay and that's why you can do this with an entire book using only a single column because you are not giving me a copy of the book. The book may have you know, 500 pages, but all you're giving me is a little slip of paper with the call number on it so that I can use that call number to find the original item. Okay? Yep? And what's the use of by value? By value is useful when you have to protect whatever you're passing. And then the other thing you can do with by value that you cannot possibly do with by reference is an expression. In other words, I could not, I cannot say at this point, I cannot say i plus one, right? Because i plus one is a temporary result of the addition, which has quote unquote no space to store. And if whatever is on the left hand side has no storage, I cannot pass by reference. Because passing by reference means I need that wormhole to go somewhere. But I plus one does not occupy space, and therefore I cannot open up a wormhole to that space. And I put double quotes around the entire statement. But you could put it in like an array, and you could have... Yes, you can pass an array by reference. That is correct, and that's the best way to pass an array, because now you don't have to make a copy of every single column in the array. You just tell the subroutine, hey, this array is on those columns, and you're done. A little slip of paper is all that you need. So in other words, if you have trouble remembering in programming context what is passing by reference, in your mind, switch it to passing by call number. Okay, You're giving me a slip of paper, not a 300 page book. You're giving me a single slip of paper with the call number of the book that I'm supposed to process. And the subroutine, me, is responsible to find that item and process the original item itself. Is that okay so far? So if the wormhole, you know, analogy doesn't work, you know, try to use the library, you know, um, analogy. Should I make a third one? No. Okay. Wormhole in the library book. Hmm. That might be a very good episode for Farscape. <laughs> 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 
<clears throat> All right. Are we okay with passing by reference? Okay. But passing by reference still requires some global variables because you need something to store the result of the operation. So we have a few. Uh, we have about ten minutes left. We can work on this one. So the next example will combine passing by value and passing by reference and see whether we can combine those two concepts into one. And I'll just make something that is really simple. So there's few, not much calculation. Um, we find sub, we'll call this sub one. Sub one has passing by reference x, and all it does is to initialize x to zero. So it's not really particularly useful, but that's the example that we're using. Um, sub two is another subroutine. This one has a by val parameter, and we'll call that to um, let's call it x two, okay? Because you know there's no confusion, because just like local variables, x is local to sub one here, and x is local to sub two here. In this case, we'll just say invoke sub one. X specifies x. And we find sub, and out, you know, out of the definitions, we have invoke sub two, and we'll use three to specify x here. Now, this is some of you probably recognize and say that this program doesn't really do anything useful, and that is true. The only purpose of this program is to illustrate how you can pass a by value parameter itself by reference to another subroutine. That's the only purpose of this program. It doesn't do anything particularly useful. But if it can serve that one purpose to illustrate that one concept, it has served its purpose. Okay, let's go ahead and save. So I will say this one is passing by value to by Right. Trace it. We just need nine line number. Do we have any globals in this case? No. Nope. There are no globals because all names are accounted for by the by ref and the by val. So the precondition really has nothing to say because we don't have any global variables to say something about. But that's fine. It's not a problem. Line 9 is the first line. It's the only line that is outside of the definition of any subroutine. And it wants to invoke sub 2. But when we invoke any subroutine, we have to use a return line number. In this case, it is post because we don't have anything following line 9. And then we have one more column to allocate because it expects one parameter, which in this case is x. How is x passed in this case? If you look at line 9 of the program, is x passed by reference or is it passed by value? It's passed by value. A single arrow means it is passed by value, which means column C actually gets the value of 3. It's passed by value. It is a copy of the left-hand side of the arrow. Then we continue execution in the subroutine, and the only line in the subroutine is on line 7. Line 7 is an invoke. So we have to remember the return line number. In this case, the return line number is going to be line 8. And we also have to allocate another column for the parameter x here. Now this may look a little bit confusing because once again we have x appearing on both ends of the double-sided arrow in this case. But don't let it confuse you. The left-hand side is always specifying the source, what am I using. And the right hand side is always specifying the destination. What am I passing it to? Okay? So the left hand side is the source and the right hand side is the destination. So this means the right hand side is using the X that is already set up. That would be column C. I am using it to specify X, which is the new column that I'm trying to set up column E here. And it is passed by reference. So what should I say on column E in this case? AKA column C. AKA column C. <coughs> because the left, because this X on the left hand side is the by value parameter X. 
the by value parameter x is living in column C. Since I'm passing it by reference, that means the parameter x of column E needs to refer to column C. Is that okay so far? Have I changed the rules at all compared to the swap example program? How about the program that we, that we used you know, before this one? We haven't changed the rules at all. Passing by reference simply means the left hand side has to have some kind of storage. It has to live in some column. And then the right hand side is the new parameter and all it needs to be is to be an alias of that column. Now we go to line three, because that's the only that's the only line in sub one that we can execute. Line three says x gets zero. Now which x are we talking about on line three? C. Nope. This x refers to column E. It is the rightmost definition of that name. And column E is the rightmost definition of x. So on line three, this x is actually referring to column E. But what is on column E? Yes. It's an alias. Column E is a wormhole. Go to line C. So whenever I want to store something to column E, it's saying, oh, no, don't do it here. Do it to column C. So in this case, I'm trying to store a zero to column E. Column E is a wormhole back to column C. And that's why column C is the one that gets changed to zero. Are we doing okay so far with this? Okay. Now we go to column four, I mean a row four, line four in the program. Line four is just like you know any other n defined sub. You just have to say column D and column E are no longer in use, and then we continue execution on line eight. Uh, but there is something important to observe here that I forgot to mention earlier. One thing that is important to recognize, which some, most of you have already recognized, is it doesn't matter when a pass by reference parameter is deallocated, because all it is is just an alias to another column. The effect of line three is still here, because line three actually changed something that is not column D or column E. It changed column C directly. So by the time we get out of the subroutine sub one, column C is still having that z the value of zero. Okay, that is important. The effect of a by reference parameter will persist after the para the parameter <coughs> is deallocated. Line eight doesn't really do, really do anything. All I can do is to re do the same thing here, and then we get to post. Yep. That's why you said this program doesn't do anything because the zero gets lost anyway. That is the correct. Because the zero is stored in a by value parameter, and by the time we get to the end of the program, we have to deallocate that anyway. So the program really doesn't do anything useful other than illustrating what happens when you use a by value parameter and pass by reference to another parameter. There are four possible combinations. So your brain teaser is basically to think about the four combinations. You start with by val, you pass it by val to somebody else. You start with by val, you pass it by reference to somebody else, and that's what we have just done here. And then the flip side is you have a by reference parameter, then you pass by value to somebody else, and then you start with a by reference parameter, and you pass it by reference again to somebody else. Okay. So those are the four possible combinations. They're all explained in the notes if you want to get a spoiler. Yep, go ahead. Ah, no, I don't want to close it. It's just minimized. Okay, so what you want to do if you want to you know, um, know the answer to those questions is to read updated subroutine notes. Okay, so don't forget to read the updated version because the representation is a little bit different and it also explains the concept, I think, a little bit more clear. Yep, rule. No, nope, I'm not taking road today. Basically, the topics we're talking about now is kind of, the, the pace is fast, and if people are missing the class, you know, I think it's really doing themselves a disservice. Sometimes it cannot be avoided, but you know, it's, yep.
Exam questions? There is, there is a zip file. <laughs>